Hi there and welcome to Busternet. This is the FM 2019 training guide. It features the work of several people including myself, Cleon and a few moderators from the SI forums and let's not forget that special man Seb Wassel, the man behind the training module. He had a lot of input into this so it's finally here. The one guide that we hope answers all your questions about the revamped training module. Over the course of the next few weeks, we will be releasing shorter videos on other little features that we want to go into a bit of depth with. And uh, well, if the written word is your thing, then head on down to the SI forums. You'll find this pinned in the tactics and training forums. You'll also find the guide available at tnbusquets.com as well as on my site, addictedtofm.com. Without further ado, let's sink into this training module. When you go to the training screen for the first time, you will see this right in front of you. It's an overview screen. It gives you salient information on the happiness of the squad, training performance, medical and a medical center report. The average training rating for the whole team is also reflected. So if this is not bad, 7.54 is a pretty good rating. Uh, you've got ratings between 0 and 10. Generally, the higher is, the higher is better, but we're not going to the numbers game because training is no longer a numbers game. So if anybody out there comes back to you and says, hey, uh, you, you need this mix of personality, this mix of ambition, this mix of determination to get X increases in uh, training of your attributes, well, that's simply not true. The only person who knows exactly what's going on is Seb Wassel, and he's not giving too much away in that regard. So... Training is going to be something that you're going to experience on your own. You can opt to give this job to the ass man. So if you want to do that, just head on down to staff, responsibilities, find the training subsection, plan general training for the first team, hand it to your ass man. Just make sure that he's got some man management skills. And if he's good at attacking or some other skill that you want your team to pick up, then that's going to be a good idea too, because then he can be one of the lead coaches. All right, so you're an intermediate kind of player and you believe that you just need a little help and uh, you don't want to depend on the ass man. What can you do? Well, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is go to schedules. You will find that there are training um, programs or sessions here that you can use. You've got light early, no matches, one match, two match. This reflects um, the calendar. Okay, so there are going to be some days in a week where you might not have any matches. You can choose this training program. There are some days when you have one match, you can choose this. And then there are some days that have two matches, you can choose this. You also have scenarios as well where you might have a fixture congestion where there are three games and your ass man comes in. Okay, fine, you know, this might be a decent training camp. You can do boot camp as well, which is like, you know, quickly come in here. Let's get you guys up to speed with fitness. Uh, and you also have training sessions which um, are very closely tied to your tactics. Here we've got the tactical presets all coming with your own training schedules. Once again, you have no matches, one match and two matches. Uh, you can use some of these uh, and um, this is training style. Basically, these are more general in focus. You can choose one match and you will find that this uh, training program is a mix of uh, what we call unit training, general team training. And uh, you've got here um, match preview, which happens usually comes in automatically if you choose a match day. And you've got one day of recovery, which we recommend you have after a match is played because these matches are usually very high in intensity and this is going to be the indicator uh, that lets you know the intensity of a particular day which is made up of three sessions you've got session one session two and the evening session or what i like to call overtime so if you've got um uh, general what you want to do is you want to make sure that you, well there's nothing to stop you from have, forcing your entire team to train for 21 sessions in a week. That is basically the whole damn week. Now, if you choose to do that, uh, you're going to have to be prepared for a bunch of players who are not going to be very happy with you. Um, the challenge here is to find the right mix where you want to train your team. You want to give them enough of a sh heavy schedule so that they can show some significant improvements in attributes. But you also want to... Um, watch their happiness as well so they don't end up being so unhappy that it affects their training and their performances in games because there are knock-on effects to everything in the game and training and tactics are now very tightly integrated the goal here is for you to have a more realistic approach towards training and 
this is something that you'll have to bear in mind whenever you work with the training module. Before we delve into the training module, let's look at the big picture, preparing your squad for training. This begins with mentoring. Mentoring replaces tutoring as we knew it in older versions of the game. In those editions, all you need to turn them to superstars was simple, change their personality, all possible within six months. Team unrealistic has been removed and it's high time too. Whether you want to admit it or not, it was unrealistic and exploitative. We've been asking for these changes for a long time and they're finally here. We have to forget up about how it might work under the hood as SI have moved it into a direction where we should think about it in a more realistic and organic way. So if anybody out there starts throwing numbers around and saying this is a magic formula for the personality a player has to have and that it can be done in seven months, six months guaranteed, well, just forget all about it because chances are um, the only people who really know this are guys who are working in SI Towers and Seb Wassel himself has confirmed this is uh, something that he's keeping very close to his chest. So how does this work? Essentially, there are some criteria that we need to look at. Um, the most important of which is the fact that if you want to mentor some of your youth players and if they're in the under-19 squad, you need to move them into the first team squad because players need to be trained together to mentor one another as well as spending time together off the training pitch. When trying to influence the players, the game will look at a few things. It will look at the age of the potential influenced player it will look at the career first team appearances of the potential influenced player. It will look at the differences in the club hierarchy between the two players. And it will also look at the social group standing between the two players. This will be something that you can potentially find out from the dynamic screen looking at hierarchy and social groups. So ideally, this would lead us to believe that team leaders make fantastic mentors. There isn't a specific age limit on mentoring. Age works in the same way as the other factors. They will impact how likely the player is to be influenced over time. If a player fulfills the criteria, the more likely the influenced player is to have their personality salute towards that of the mentoring player. So if you, if you find players that fit this criteria, you may be able to get some personality transfers going on here. Now, if there is nothing in common between them, chances are you're not going to be able to transfer any personalities. So this is going to be one of the ways in which we will be working on uh, mentoring. So it's going to work in a group. So how do you do this in the game? There are two ways of doing this, right? So you can move a player from the under-19 squad. Like we have a couple of 19s, under-19s here. We want to move into the first team squad. So we identify Kenneth Taylor. We'll move him into the first team squad and then we can go to training you can go to mentoring now there are two ways you can do this the first way is of course the easiest way ask the assistant to assign bang and you've got a perfect little combination going on here he's got Danny Blaine he's got a couple of the youngsters in here the 16 year olds have already been automatically put into this group and we've actually got a pretty decent group here da Daily Blaine is a team leader he is going to be working with this group of people then we've got another mentoring group Yo Weltman here so we've got all we've got one two both of them the team leaders and we've got another team leader here in class in Mahutala, you can notice that the three players we saw in the um, hierarchy here, dynamics hierarchy, they are going to have a significant influence on their groups. You can definitely do it on your own by choosing um, who you should be fitting into the groups. The minimum size of each group is three. The maximum, there's no limit. However, remember uh, that it can work both ways. So if you have a group of jokers and you have one professional player inside that, there is that possibility that that professional player could turn into a joker too. So you want to be careful uh, and pay attention to what you're doing. There's also another way you can mentor a player. It's the welcome to club function, which also serves as a way of setting a piece of short one, short term one on one mentoring between a new signing and an established player. Mentoring is slower than the previous tutoring system. You should not expect to see an unprofessional player become a professional player within a few months, like two or three months, or even in the course of a few short months. So if you're thinking, hell man, I'm going to mentor this player within four months, he'll be a professional professional it might not happen it could take a it could take a really long time it could take uh you know six months nobody knows only si knows and there's a big luck factor here involved as well does this mean you need to move 
everybody into the first team squad from the under 19s no if you do something like that then you'll increase the workload of your coaches the quality of training in the first team squad will drop and your players will be unhappy so what you really want to do is focus on high potential players be selective about who you bring on and if they're already 18 years old then they should really be playing for your first team if they're not good enough then put them out on loan what about those that are been promoted to the first team squad who are under 19 but not really good enough for the first team well they can still benefit from mentoring what you can do for them is to make sure that they get enough game time just make them available for the under 19s and then they'll just keep on playing for the under 19s for either the full duration of the match or if you feel generous enough give them a couple of minutes with the main team so you've done mentoring what do you do next go to units when you enter units, you will make a decision on who plays where. Now, this is fairly straightforward. So, if you have a more attacking uh, driven tactic, then you may want to reconsider who plays in the attacking unit, for example. You can also move players from the under-19 into these units so that they can benefit from the first team squad's training. The next step is, of course, to set up your set piece stakers. Now, this you, you will only do once your tactic is set up so that these players will also benefit from specific training sessions which are focused more on set pieces. Now, it's time for us to take a look at the training schedules in a bit more detail. When you want to create your training schedule you will have to think of your sessions during a day within these sessions you'll have all these little training sessions that you can fit into them there are training sessions that work on improving your tactile familiarity of your team and attributes there are training sessions that are specifically focused on just improving attributes for players without any tactical familiarity. There are also training sessions that work on preparing you for your upcoming match. There are training sessions that specifically deal with uh, set-piece deliveries, for example. And there are training sessions that uh, will deal with uh, programs to increase team cohesion like community outreach programs and team bonding. This could be an example of a pre-season training schedule where we are focused on building up their natural fitness, uh, some of their physical elements so that they can be ready for the season ahead and we are pretty generous with our rest periods as well. It's just one way of doing it. There's nothing to stop you from creating more intensive schedules but you need to keep an eye out on their physical conditioning and you want to avoid injuries. Um, Nothing is, there's nothing to stop you from creating your training programs in whichever way you desire. We've covered squad training. What about individual focus training? Each player can be assigned a position, role and duty to be trained in and this will determine which attributes are developed. You can also assign extra individual training and control the intensity a player should train and collectively, this is called additional focus training. The training intensity level for the whole team can be adjusted via the rest step. Here you can automate the intensity based on the physical condition of players. When a player has an individual training workload of medium, he can usually do additional focus training, player trait development or have his training intensity increase. A more professional a player is, the more likely he is to get on well with extra training. There are many parts in training now but the attribute part aids development in those specific areas. More time spent on one attribute will equal more chance of development. If you go to individual focus training, you'll find that some of these um, attributes have been grouped together like agility and balance, uh, defensive positioning, train more than one attribute at a time. And there are some attributes that are missing like heading and crossing for example. So if you want to train your team and if you want your defenders to be able to deal with crosses in the box, you basically need to create a schedule for them. Here we have a schedule that has got these elements included. So you've got, we have um, our defensive team will work on uh, improving the heading, marking, positioning decisions and um, anticipation uh, while the attacking group actually attacks them and you know, sends in crosses. So everybody gets a chance to improve naturally. There's going to be more attention for the boys who are defending. Uh, you can add other sessions as well like aerial defense where they work on heading, positioning, technique concentration and marking and you can further make it even more interesting by getting them to work on balance jumping reach strength work rate and aerial reach so if you wanted to improve your size ability to deal with crosses coming into the box and you specifically wanted to work on your defenders this is the way to do it in fm19 there are two objectives in training. We want to improve the tactical familiarity of individuals in our team and we also want to improve team cohesion. So essentially, we want 
individual players to know what they're doing within the scope of your tactic. And we also want our team to play better as a unit. So how can you tell if it, uh, players are getting tactically familiar with their systems? If you go down to the training, you'll see individual. You'll notice here, there's a little report here that tells you how familiar players keep becoming with this tactic. For as a team, you want to go to dynamics, look at match cohesion, and you will see how their collective mental state has improved and whether they're working better as a team. FM19 takes training to a new level. You still need to get the basics right. You need to choose the right kind of players. You always have to invest in your facilities. You always have to invest in your coaches. You need to be playing your players when they're 18 years old and above. Those still remain true. What is now very unique is the fact that every manager can have a unique training program specifically tailored for his team. So if you are an LLM site or a lower league site that is trying to punch above its weight and wants to play for set pieces, you can specifically create a training program that is focused on physical attributes as well as set piece deliveries. And that can be the hallmark of your training style. In fact, it could define the entire identity of your club and the style of football that you play. I want to thank everybody who helped put this guide together. Cleon, Seb Wassel, Everybody had a massive part to play in this guide and I really hope the community at large find it useful. If you have further questions or if there are other areas that you need clarifications on, please drop me a note here. Look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or look for Cleon at Cleon81. Written guides on the training module are available at SI forums as well as tnbusquets.com and addicted to fm.com once again i'd like to thank everybody for their continued support this channel my patrons included you guys take care have a good one i'll see you again soon bye bye